There are several distinct properties of liquids that can be influenced by the strength of intermolecular attractions between the molecules in the liquid. In this PowerPoint, we're going to be discussing viscosity, surface tension, and capillary rise. Have you ever noticed how liquids such as honey or motor oil flow really slowly? These are examples of liquids with high viscosity. Viscosity is defined as a measure of a liquid's resistance to flow. It's dependent on several factors, including the intermolecular forces between molecules within the liquid, the size and shape of those molecules, and the temperature. So here are some measurements of the viscosity or resistance to flow of several common substances. And the measurements are made in units of millipascals per second. You can think of these numbers as measuring the force required to move one layer of liquid molecules over another. So the higher the force required, the greater the resistance to flow and the greater the viscosity. Notice that at the small end of the viscosity range, we have straight chain alkanes made up of carbon and hydrogen. So these are all nonpolar molecules. There's no high electronegativity atoms in these chains, and they're dominated by dispersion forces, the weakest of the intermolecular forces. And as a result, they flow much more easily. They have lower viscosities. But you will notice that as the molecules actually get larger, the viscosity does actually increase. This is because the larger molecules actually have more electrons associated with them that allows uh, greater dispersion forces to develop, stronger induced dipoles. But if we look at water, which is a much smaller molecule than n-decane, we actually have a very similar value for viscosity. And of course, we've already discussed that water is a very polar molecule. And as a result, it develops very strong intermolecular attractions. And so even though it's a tiny molecule compared to some of these alkanes, it actually has a greater resistance to flow because of those intermolecular forces that develop. And we see a similar effect for ethanol, which has an OH group associated with it, and ethylene glycol, which has two OH groups. And remember that that oxygen-hydrogen combination is associated with hydrogen bonding, a particularly strong form of a dipole-dipole interaction. Finally, at the bottom of this chart, we have motor oil and honey which we already know have high viscosities, and we can see that reflected in the actual values that are represented here. So motor oil is actually made up of hydrocarbons similar to the alkanes at the top of the list. The big difference here is that these hydrocarbons are huge, 30 to 50 carbons in them. So the larger the molecule, the larger those forces, and as a result, the higher the viscosities for the liquid. Honey has, that, has a huge viscosity, it's made up of also a mixture of different molecules. This time it's much more of a complex mixture of mostly carbohydrate sugar molecules. So here's a look at some of the chemical structures of those carbohydrate molecules found in honey. Notice the complexity and size of all of these different molecules, as well as the many polar OH groups all over these molecules, all over. It's this combination of molecular size and intermolecular force strength from those polar OH interactions that give honey its high viscosity. There's one last factor that can influence viscosity, and that's temperature. So you know that if you want to get honey to flow more quickly, you can actually microwave it for a few seconds. And as the temperature increases, the molecules move more rapidly and their kinetic energies are be better able to overcome the intermolecular forces that hold them together. And as a result, they actually can move more easily relative to each other. The viscosity of the liquid decreases. The intermolecular forces that hold liquid molecules together are called cohesive forces. This drawing depicts the cohesive forces in action in liquid water droplets. 
Notice that the molecules within the liquid are surrounded by other molecules and are influenced by intermolecular forces equally in all directions. It's a slightly different story at the surface of the liquid though. The molecules on the surface are only attracted by other molecules on the side and below them. The intermolecular attractions are actually unbalanced at the surface of the liquid, and pools from below and to the side are able to actually make those liquid molecules at the surface contract or pull together a little more. The net result is that liquids contract to form a shape that minimizes the number of molecules on the surface. In other words, a shape with minimal surface area, and that shape is a sphere. This is why small amounts of liquids tend to form spherical droplets where the ratio of surface area to volume is minimal. Now when the amount of water is greater, then the influence of gravity is also greater and the shapes are less spherical. Surface tension is a measure of the tendency of liquids to minimize their surface area or to contract. Another way of stating this is that it's a measure of the energy or force required to increase the surface area of a liquid or move surface molecules apart a given distance. Here are some measured surface tensions in units of millinewtons per meter of some common liquids. Now water has an extremely high surface tension reflecting the strong hydrogen bonding forces between the molecules and the small size of those molecules. Ethanol also has hydrogen bonding associated with it, but notice that the molecule is actually larger. For the same surface area of ethanol and water, there are going to be fewer molecules of ethanol compared to water, and therefore fewer intermolecular interactions. In this case, the smaller the molecule, the higher the surface tension. Now, ethylene glycol is about the same size as ethanol, but notice that it has two OH groups compared to ethanol's one, and as a result, the surface tension goes up. So the stronger the intermolecular force strength, the higher the surface tension. Adhesive forces are the intermolecular forces of attraction between two different molecules. The formation of a meniscus is a great example of this type of force at work. This picture shows the formation of a meniscus at the surface of liquid mercury on the left and water on the right. And notice the difference in shape. This is because of a difference in the relative strength of adhesive forces versus cohesive forces within these two liquids. Water actually forms very strong adhesive attractions with glass. And as a result, the water molecules in contact with the glass actually creep upward and you get a meniscus with that classic concave curved surface that we're familiar with. Mercury, on the other hand, has stronger cohesive forces than adhesive forces. So very little attraction for the glass, but attraction between the actual atoms of mercury within the liquid. As a result, the mercury doesn't creep up the glass, but we do get a convex spherical shape because of the surface tension of the mercury. Adhesive interactions are also responsible for the phenomenon of capillary action. So this is when liquid flows up some type of material due to adhesive attractions between the liquid molecules and the surface of the material. One example of this is the way that liquid can wick up paper, like the picture of wine rising up the paper towel here. So the cellulose fibers in the paper contain many OH groups, which attract both the water and, in this case, the ethanol molecules in the wine. So these attractions draw the molecules in the liquid up the cellulose fibers, and cohesive forces of those water molecules for each other also help draw up um, more water as the front of liquid continues to move up the paper. So it allows it to rise even higher. 
Another example of capillary action is the collection of small amounts of blood for medical analysis using small diameter glass tubes. These are called capillary tubes because certain liquids will rise up them due to the adhesive forces between the liquid and the surface of the glass. How far up the blood goes depends on the diameter of the tube. A small tube has a large surface area for a given volume of blood, and this results in larger adhesive forces which draw the blood farther up the tube. When the weight of the liquid in the tube generates a downward force equal to the upward force associated with the capillary action, the liquid stops rising. In summary, Liquid properties such as viscosity, surface tension, and capillary rise are all influenced by the strengths of intermolecular attractions. These attractions can be classified as one of two types, cohesive forces between the same type of molecules and adhesive forces between different molecules.